now some people from grammar going towards drum and bass it's there's a bit of jealousy there mm. they're thinking oh like why is he going to um drum and bass oh he's a sellout yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the kind of chat you hear. Like, I was hearing that at one point. Really? Yeah. After I done a song, I done a tune called Headlines with Whiny. People were saying, "Oh, sub like why why like why are you doing drum and bass for like what stick to grime?" But I was like, "Bro, drum and bass is not far off from grime." Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official dot com. Street culture TV. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, as your mum lets you be. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Big shout out to all the regulars, seniors, and newbies, big up yourselves for all street culture sports. You know what to do? Go to the television app, free download, iPhone, Android for all of them sports. So it's mini docs, big docs. Um, DJ Mixes already notorious podcast of all varieties. A variety don't start better than right here with my special guest. Woo! Grime is in the building. Drum and bass is in the building. This is a versatile MC right here. Not to mention Shoddy Crew Original, North London Finest, Hold Tight, Sub 10 in the building. Yes, yes, man. What's going on? Right? I'm good. How are you, bro? I'm all right, man. Yeah, I'm easy. We've been very lucky to have each other's company twice in one week. We won't go too deep into that. Yeah. Um, but there's an energy that you bring to the to the game, and I'm curious to know where it comes from and, and where it all starts and, and what it's all about for you. Do you know what it is? Growing up in North London, there was a lot of talent. And from young, we used to listen to grime, rap, hip-hop, garage. And for me personally, yeah, I was in a group called Shoddy Crew, and... The talent in that group motivated me to want to even be an MC. I remember when I first heard Tinchy Strider from mm. Rusk, he was the first person I, I heard as a grime artist. And I was like, yeah, this guy's cold, man. I need to start MCing. So. Rusk was north as well, wasn't it? Like, they were from east. East, bro. Yeah. Rusk were it, man. They had the instrumentals on Smash as well. And, and Do you remember that tune, Ting? I mean, that was when I first got the introduction. Yeah, and Ting, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, man. So, um, yeah, man, they definitely influenced me to even be an MC. Tinchy Strider... Dizzy Rascal, Skepta, so yeah, definitely. But from North London, obviously Skepta definitely influenced mm. me. Yeah, yeah. I, I I remember seeing old videos of those guys. I can't remember what skate park it was, but you know, JME was. Yeah, I know it. That that skate park is in. I think it's in Edmonton or Enfield. Mm, that's it's right. on the motorway. Yeah, yeah. in the motorway. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. There's also um, South Tottenham. They've got the uh, they got that park. What's it called? Al, 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 oh, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, the the street culture up north it was rife. <laughs> what was it like growing up? Boy, it was rough, man. I won't even lie to you. But um, to be honest, in Tottenham, if you kept yourself to yourself, then um, you'll be fine. But at that time, there was a lot of gangs and a lot of like politics going on in the area. And to be honest, music was meant to be the thing to help everyone get out of the hood. Because mm. at those times, they would have youth clubs. There was a place called The Hub. They had another youth club on Bruce Grove as well. So they were trying to do things for the community to stay out of trouble. Mm. Like at the same time, after we finish with the community, I mean, finish with the, like the Hub and um, the youth club, we'll go back to doing our stupidness. Mm. I, I, to be honest, if music wasn't around that time, I think a lot of people would have gone Joe. Back then. You reckon? Yeah, man, because music... At one point, everyone was doing music. In Tottenham, it was either you were known for music or football. Them type, them two, two things kind of made you popular, mm. music and football. So, yeah, I feel that's how a lot of friendships got built as well. I get yeah. you. I can speak personally. I, I lived in Tottenham for about three or four years yeah. on Lansdowne Road. Just yeah, by that's there. not far from me. No, no really? I yeah. like building, you know I mean? Just, just off of there, I can't remember what number the house it was. But yeah, you see a lot of things that after a while you become kind of sanitised too, don't you? Yeah. As if it's like part of the course of being in the yeah. inner city. Mm -hmm. um, uh, music, grime for its time. How old would you have been when you first in interacted with that? I started, I was in year, I think I was in year nine when I started doing gram, so I was probably about, probably like 13, 14, I think. 13, 12, 13, 14, I think. Wow, so you Yeah, I've been doing music for a long time. I How do you know? To you. 
Yeah, man, I'm 33 right now. That's so you right, well done. I was on and off, on and off. I took it serious when I was young. I remember I was on a BBC Three documentary as well because there was a, a member in our crew called um, Shutter Daniels. He was doing like a BBC Three documentary. Like they were following him around Tottenham, his school. And we had a clip, clips in, in the um, documentary as well. We was emceeing, we were shooting a video as well. So I kind of like, I've been kind of around all of that stuff from young. But um, yeah, man, I, I actually think yeah, like music back then was more, I feel music back then brought us more as a community back then. I think now everyone's kind of separate now. Mm. Everyone's more on their own thing. That's mm. what I kind of feel, yeah. Back then everyone was friends. Everyone would link up and do songs. I can't probably even name you the last time I done a song with someone from Tottenham. Really? Yeah, I don't. Why think is I'm, that? Why I don't know, man. I feel like everyone's just on their own thing. Obviously, obviously, some areas don't get along in Tottenham, but as a whole, it's like you may have someone's phone number, but you still can't get in the studio with them. That's so bizarre, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's crazy. I've kind of worked more with East MCs more than North MCs, to be honest, and I find that kind of strange. Do you think there's an exotic in that, again, I guess, re-exporting yourself back into East and vice versa? Do you think there's something to do, you know, it's, it's covering ground. Yeah. If you're in top, but that still seems quite bizarre. It is bizarre, yeah, definitely. Because I've worked with, in Grime, I've worked with Merkster and Dizzy Rascal, Tinchy Strider. Um, I rate Merkster. Yeah, Merkster's quite a few great. of them, they're from East. I've worked with some a few North MCs, but... Yeah, man. Um, mostly from East, but you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because not a lot of people in North are into Grime anymore. But I can't really say that because you got Skepta, Frisco. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a hub. People. Yeah. So it's like. Do you think that's? Do you think? <coughs> do you think that it could be more? What's the word? You know, you got you have got the Dons. A lot of Dons in North. Yeah. Surely that should be incubated should, yeah. and preser- I don't know more interaction. Like you yeah. say, community vibes. It should be hundred percent, but again, man, you we I we I don't know, man. We just it's a thing, yeah. Like someone will, some of the embassies will just see you and say, "Oh, you're doing well." They give you a pat on your back, but you can't get in the studio with them. I don't know why. Probably the last probably legend I worked with from North was probably President T, Whoa. and that was in 2019. But the song didn't even come out. But President T, he definitely shouts me and brings me on shows, a few shows in Grime. So I'll big him up. But besides that, yeah, no. So bizarre. Do you think there's an there's an argument that perhaps Grime has? Here we go, Spice Alert. There's <laughs> this kind of like fractioning of arena sized mm. shows with big, big acts that kind of detach themselves slightly from the scene? Yeah. I feel like in Grime, if you ain't got a fan base, I'm talking like a JME fan base mm. or a DWE fan base, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people are doing their own thing. They have got their small core fan base, but the arena shows it's more likely to be like a Dizzy Rascal or JME. But Dizzy Rascal, he's not even full-blown Grime as well. No, no, he's trying he's to He's an all-rounder. Yeah, he's, he's... an all-rounder, so... Yeah, but when I'm talking grime, fully grime, I couldn't actually name you someone that is selling out arenas. Besides, I don't know if Jamie sells out arenas, but he's got his own mm. shows that he's, I think it's called um, <coughs> Grime MC or Grime FM, I think. That does well, though. It does well. I, I, I done one of his sets, mm. I think, back in December. It was, it was in, um, what was it? I think Oxford Circus or Tottenham Court Road. But um, yeah, man, it's the fans, man. Mm. And I just feel like, that's why with me, I kind of like swifted a bit to drum and bass a bit mm. because drum and bass, I get the love from there. Like it's more organic. Funny you say that. Yeah, because I was going to, because obviously this this channel caters for everything. Mm. But the thing that I've noticed mostly is the resurgence of drum and bass and jungle mm. and how in, uh, it, um, inclusive it is so yeah. far as people from outside of the genre, like P Money or mm. Flo Dan, yeah. you know, you hear them busting John bass, and you don't realise how closely connected the two genres are. Yeah, it is, it is definitely connected, but I feel like a lot of grime MCs of today don't, because they're so protective over the grime genre, because I feel like Drill took off and Drill's like the cousin of grime. Mm-hmm. It's like Drill's become so successful. Grime is not in a place where it used to be. So now some people from Grime are going towards drum and bass. It's, there's a bit of jealousy there. Mm. They're thinking, oh, like, why is he going to um, drum and bass? Oh, he's a sellout. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the kind of chat you hear. Like, I was hearing that at one point. Really? Yeah. After I done a song, I done a tune called Headlines with Whiny. People were saying, "Oh, sub like why why like why are you doing drum and bass for like what stick to grime?" But I was like, "Bro, drum and bass is not far off from grime. Yeah. It's just a bit faster." Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's and, all of that. Yeah, and I feel like when I look at most of the successful people in this music game. They never just blew off one genre. They've all done different genres. Like, Wiley's done different genres. His biggest song is not a grime song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, to be honest, for me personally, it doesn't matter what genre you do. If you're doing well in it, do it, innit? Mm. But with grime, again, they're so protective of the genre, they expect everyone to stick to grime. But if it's not making you money, what do you do? What's defined... Yeah, 100%. What's defined as the, um, the purest... Aspect. What is the purest aspects of grime that you think that these um, fans and people, clearly avid supporters of grime, what do they cling on to? What is the thing that that, that defines grime as the genre it is? And I know that sounds really, you know, <laughs> obvious, but the the, the 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 walls are closing. Yeah. And and how do you define it? One minute a club's open, next minute it's closed. Yeah, you know, I just I don't to be honest with grime. You know what? Do you know what? With grime is radio sets. Yeah, radio sets. That's something that is important in grime that maybe other genres don't really do as much. And obviously, you know, with grime, there's you get the reload when you're spitting yeah. your sixteen bars. You get which is a, a win each and every time. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, those are the kind of things that, yeah, it's more that radio and um, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like ra even. It come like radio is more important than the songs, making actually making grime songs. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you might be an MC that doesn't release as much music here, but you're doing your radio rounds are crazy. You're probably on Rinse FM one day, Pyro, Pyro Radio, BBC One Extra Kiss, mm -hmm. anywhere, yeah? Like, you could actually be a popular grime MC just of doing radio sets. You don't even have to make a, a, a big song. Right. You know what I mean? But you know, other genres, you need a song. Yeah. Because if you're going to a festival or you're doing a show, you need to perform your music. With grime, you can get away with jumping on someone else's show and just spitting a 16 bar, getting yeah. a reload and go about your business. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's what they love. I mean, I love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? When things have been sent, the dubs are fucking firing. Mm. And it's, it's an MC sport. Yeah. It's an MC sport. There are, of course, huge exceptions within the genre of like classic tunes. Mm. Um, I think one of the more closest comparables of, of an age is probably manga. Yeah. That actually manages to balance both. Yeah. Does does um does does the rotation of being on these radio stations, do you think it serves an artist and build their profile or do you think it hinders them long term? Um <sighs> it, it can Ooh, is <laughs> some more <laughs> critical it, questions it here. Can, it, it can help them, but I feel like back in the days it, it helped them. Now, yeah, people want to hear songs because even if lab when labels are coming over to you to, to have conversations, because a lot of people in Gram they will make music and they wanna give it to labels, but labels are not taking taken into it. But but to be honest, it's their own fault because they're probably focusing on the radio route. Uh. You know what I mean? Like with grime, there hasn't been a big grime song in a long time. Mm. With grime, yeah, we can you can do the radio rounds, but make some songs as well. Yeah, let's think about that. What big tunes has there been recently? I mean, D Double E seems to be knocking out some bits. Yeah, at any given point, it's just, it's I think scary. "Shut Up" was the last big grime song. Yeah, or "Shut Down" from Skepta. That was a big one. Yeah, I don't know any other massive song that's crossed the border like that since yeah. then. And done it internationally. Yeah. And now, am I right in thinking Skepta's more DJ based? Yeah, he's doing a DJ thing right now, but I feel like he's got probably another album coming. He can release whenever he wants anyway, True. so yeah. yeah, he has that power. But yeah, man, I just feel like with the grime scene right now, there just needs to be more big music, more more songs. Mm. Renz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the subject of sending. Mm. Because... You know, if anything's competitive, it's this channel. What's the deal? How, what happened with you, Renz? Um, basically, that was just an, a person's opinion, man. Like, he basically had a little feud with um, Reese West, and I was at the show. Um, DJ Argue was DJing at the time. Was Big up Grime Argue. Originals. Yeah, it was at Grime Originals. Oh, they, come on. I think they were having a dispute on Twitter about the show, who merked who, who won, and then 
obviously I was in the crowd, I saw it. So then Reese asked me, like, I lie, I met Renz at the set. And I was like, yeah, you did, because mm. I saw it. DJ argue, how you beat someone in a clash is who gets the most reloads, innit? Mm -hmm. In the time. Mm -hmm. And argue was Renz's DJ, but he's wheeling Reese Bear. So I said, yeah, Reese won. I didn't know he took it to heart like that. This was in probably like 2019, 2020, 2021. I heard he's been indirecting me on radio, but I wasn't aware because I was so focused on the DMB thing because mm. I just made the song with Whiny and it was just doing its rounds. The thing with DMB, when you make a big song, yeah, it can it can last you for a year. Hell yeah. So I wasn't even... Cross the festivals. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to Grammy. This is lockdown period and I was still getting shows during lockdown, but most of my shows, they might, they might turn a big show into a virtual show or I was doing like Hospitality Weekend mm -hmm. in the Woods. So I'm not knowing what's going on. Someone sent me a link of him sending for me on Spiral Set. Saying he made a set of bar like, I like double S, don't like sub 10. I didn't even pay attention to it. Then I saw he done a freestyle on his block and he done the same bar. So I okay, what's wrong with this brother? Still, did he, still didn't pay attention. Then after, um, what's it called? Later on in the year, Cadell, I think he made a song and then Cadell was bare playing the song to me so it was in my face so I was like okay cool and I had a project at the time coming out so I said when my project comes then mm. I'm going to entertain it mm. obviously I made my tune back after he used to talk a lot on Twitter so I had a conversation with him on the phone I realised that it wasn't serious he was just basically just trying to trying to um, do something for his promo run mm -hmm. but then it ended up being Cadell taking on his drama that was meant to be with me and then it ended up being him going Guy and I for the whole year. So, yeah. <sighs> that energy out of you, doesn't it? It was a lot, man, because at the end of the day, I was focused on other things and it was like... Dragged back in. Yeah, and I was like, I didn't know where it comes from because for me, I wasn't used to something like that, like someone just sending for me for no reason. Yeah. More time, when someone sends for someone, it has to be a valid reason. Yeah. Fair enough, he must have been annoyed by my opinion, but you yeah. can't be annoyed by someone's opinion that was there and yeah. saw it. But that's what it was. But then it, it got blown out of proportion. Basically, Cadell made it more bigger than it was. Mm. Then it even it wasn't even about me and Renz normal. It was about me and Cadell because of Renz. Not well, I'm serious. Yeah, man. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. But it gives part of the culture in it. That's, yeah. that's the, how did it resolve itself? We just fizzled out. Really? Yeah, it's fizzled out, man. It's not. It's not serious, man. Like yeah. it's Twitter. Yeah. Twitter spaces. It's not serious. Like no one, no one really wants to beef anyone. It's just music. Yeah. Know what I mean? People made it seem like it was some big thing. I remember even the complex mag got behind it as well. But it was, it was not serious, man. Like, you speak to these guys on the phone and you realise it's not serious. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's part of the course. Yeah. Everyone loves that shit. It's just part of... And that's, again, just the, the whole... The grind, the grind backdrop. Yeah. And how that plays out into the cross-marketing. Mm -hmm. You think of an age of when grind first was spawned and these were like tools yeah you know mm -hmm. old dvds and yeah. and tape packs with of its time mm. it's crazy tell me more about the shoddy crew give me give me some more background on well, that shoddy crew yeah um the members in that crew was um shutter daniels maestro myself double s chipmunk there's quite a there's very bare of us like lady t so many people. I think we were just the, the kids in the area that were just good at music. Mm. And we, we had a dream at the time. We wanted to blow. Mm. So we used to be in the studio all the time just trying to find a tune to blow. And obviously we would go on radio stations, power radio stations like Axe FM, Heat FM. We're just doing our thing. Mm. Yeah, man. We were just kids doing our thing. We had a dream. But obviously sometimes things don't end the way you want it to end because we're still youths. Yeah. So we want real life hits you. Mm. For me personally, that's why I kind of like moved myself away and Double S and Chipmunk carried on and mm. then they ended up being in a the position they are in today. Yeah, because you and Double S tight. Yeah, we known each other from young and yeah. he was in my crew and he, he was like the best in the crew at the time, innit? So yeah. he was like the face was out of him and yeah, Chipmunk. Yeah. So it's true, it's true. Yeah. Well, Chipmunk went on and obviously done all yeah. the great things. That, how was that for you guys at the time? Actually, let me... That, that could be quite a loaded answer there. Mm. More so... When you're that age, you go through process, you're all hungry for the same thing. Yeah. But then life happens. Yeah. Personalities are forged. Like, did you feel, did you feel a sense of a change? Not just from Chipmunk, not just from, you know, 
from an age point of view, but from mm. just what what your equal desires were, maybe if they started fragmenting. Yeah, I feel like, to be honest, I'll be real with you, yeah. When I was doing music at that time, I, I was in it for the <coughs> girls. I didn't really, yeah. Big that up. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> man really, man out. <laughs> I never really, I never really took the music thing too serious. I was good at it, but I never took it too serious. Like, that double and Chipmunk took it serious. That's why they ended up with always recording. Yeah. Like, I was just in it for the fun. I liked the attention. Everyone was, like, if you was a footballer or a, or, or a grime MC them times, you was popping mm. and we was good. On all the radio stations, everyone's locking in on the forums. Because those times you have to lock in through webcam. That's right. So it's like, we was the guys. But it's like... Because you're being seen as well. Yeah, we're being seen. So it's like, bro, how are they getting on radio? Mm. How are they able to do this? But yeah, man. For me, like I said, reality hit me. like Because I, I, I wasn't in it for the long run at that time, I started looking into other ventures. I wasn't really on the music thing like that. But them two going on kind of motivated me because I thought, you know what, raw like, these lot have taken to the next level because going on BBC One Extra them times was a big thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you've bro. to us, you've blown. Yeah. So when I saw that and I'm seeing Chipmunk on TV, I'm seeing him winning mobile awards, I'm thinking, nah, there's money in this music thing because to us, I never used to think there was money in it. I just know, yeah, when I'm going rage, I'm paying my five pound subs to go and do my, my tunes. Obviously, I didn't used to pay for studio as much because... um Shotted he had a studio, but if I had to, I'll pay my money for studio and mm. do my thing. Everyone chips in for a video or whatever, but I wasn't making proper physical cash at that mm. time. Mm. But when I saw them not doing it, I was thinking, nah, man, I need, I want in. I need to be part of this. Yeah. So yeah, I started to get back in, but it was hard, man. Because well, well, How so? Because remember, yeah, when you start, no one's really trying to bring you because... You ain't got nothing to bring to the table. Mm. Yeah, you may have grown up with someone or go way back with them, but you need to prove yourself. And that took time. Like, I had to, bro, I had to, like, do the most. I even linked up with one of my old school brethren. He was in Shoddy Crew as well called Limit. He was the only person sending me beats at the yeah, time. Limit. Yeah, 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 anyone that has the arm to send you stuff like yeah. where you need it. Yeah, he sent Rare. me some rhythms and... Mm. He's the first person to work with me. Like he had faith in me. He kept saying, "Bruv, go for it." And I've done a tune called Mazza with Double S and Capo Lee. That was like my first grime tune, innit? it? Like, like proper big grime tune at the time. So um, <clears throat> we shot it in Northampton Park. So I was like, "Yeah, man, this was like my intro into mm. the scene." Obviously, I'd done a song before that called "They Went About," but I feel Mazza was my intro. Like, mm. okay, and Capo at the time was becoming like the golden yeah, boy, yeah, bro. Yeah, Capo Lee's name was rising because I know Capo from back in the day when he was DJing. His name, dude. Was... I thought that ages ago. Yeah. I was like, is that the same? Yeah, his name. His name was Lee Man. He used to be Scope and Lee Man. Right, gotcha. Yeah, but then he ended up being the golden boy in the grime scene. I was like, raw, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just transferred skills, basically. Yeah. So we ended up working. We jumped on the tune, and it kind of helped me. Yeah. Made people aware. Okay, yeah, sub turns back on music because again, people knew I didn't take music seriously. Mm. You know what I mean? So. So you yeah. felt like you were kind of the, the the other end of the crew that perhaps didn't take it so seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's admirable you say that. Is there anybody else that you could say to yourself, man, they had huge potential within a crew, but they just didn't maximise? In Shoddy Crew? Yeah. I'd say Maestro, Shot D, Dodger. It was basically everyone. Mm. Gats, everyone. Everyone had it because everyone was actually good. Mm. Yeah, everyone was actually good. But again... It's, you know, sometimes when you're young and if something's not happening that quick, you just mm. you become disheartened and you lose interest. That's what it was with some people anyway. For me, like I said, I just wasn't serious in the first place. But mm. a lot of people, because they're not seeing it quickly, it's like, oh. Yeah. I remember we're youths. We, we, we got so much time in the world. We're thinking we can come back to it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't really, you don't realise yeah. time is the currency. Mm. <clears throat> and the other aspect to that is just the the idea of returning because if you had gone and done it then quite easily have gained so much attention yeah. that it would have gone south it wouldn't have worked out yeah facts I feel like for me everything is timing maybe for me the time that I started doing music was the right time for me mm. because yeah I've, I, even after um, I quit I came back again I think in like 2010, I was in a rap group called Shower EMT. It was a rap group based in Northumberland. That was like 
Yeah. Where, base where? North? Based in Northumberland, North London, Northumberland Park. Yeah. Same as Shoddy oh, yeah. Crew. Shoddy Crew was based there as well. But that was like a street rap thing. And that was building mad because those times we was getting like 100k views. And 100k views back in 2010 was like a million views. So that was, but it was street rap. But again, that was only going to go so far as well because you got police trying to shut you down mm. and all this stuff because they're saying it's gangs or whatever. But yeah, man, I'm I, for me personally, I've done, I feel like I've done loads of things when it comes to music. I've done nearly every genre. Mm. I've tried Afro beats as well. It wasn't for me, even though I'm from Ghana, it wasn't for me. So yeah, man. But um, grime has always been something that was actually for me. And then organically the drum and bass thing fell into my lap and now I seem to be getting better at it each time I'm doing a tune so yeah I feel like the t the timing was right because I came back in the music game I think 2016 2016 oh, what a landscape that was back then yeah I mean that was peak times like grime was it was sitting nicely yeah it was it? doing well I came yeah. at a time when grime was lit this is when Skepta and that was outside everyone was outside like yeah. I remember it was cold. Like every all you, if you're going Shoreditch Box Park, you see so many crime MCs. There, everyone was linking up at Box Park. The um, Ace Hotel in Shoreditch. Mm -hmm. Like it was the scene was lively. I came at that time. It was sick. Rinse was popping as well. Yeah, mm. I think again, big up DJ Argy, big up Vixie Yama, um, and all the uh, yeah, all the uh, dub plate spinners. Mm. It really kind of set precedence, didn't it? That era. Yeah, to my understanding. You think perhaps drum and bass has that resurgence that we're talking about here with, with, with grime of twenty sixteen onwards. Yeah, I feel like you know for me personally, yeah, like I've done my research on drum and bass, and I didn't know. I feel like now, I feel like with me, I don't do the the normal drum and bass. Like I got my own type of drum and bass. I mm. feel like I'm I'm more like of a half time rapper on DMB. I don't really do. I can do the fast. Tempo, but I'm more mm. half time, and I feel like I'm trying to. I do the cool boy DMB kind of music. I do the DMB like, if you didn't fuck with DMB back then, you'll be like, nah, this is sick. Because when I first made headlines, no one understood it in my area. They're like, what are you doing? Like, they didn't, they, they didn't get it. I'm arguing with people in my area. They're like, bro, this is not your type of music. Go make a rap tune or a grime tune. But over time, when they started seeing what was happening with the song, you have to like it. You're forced to. That's the type of generation we're in now. They all people believe in something when they see the song doing well, doing numbers. And that's sad because yeah. it's like, you should believe in me in the start. Because I remember I was getting a lot of backlash in the beginning when I done that song. Now it's, wow, that song's sick, man. Rare, yeah. rare, rare. It's on like four million streams. Yeah. When when they started seeing that, that's when people started taking me serious. Do we blame right? Do we blame the people for that in the current climate? I'd argue if you tolerate this, then your children will be next. It's like, actually, probably. But then we have to think about the way that we behave as well. Yeah. Because I know I consume things in a particular way. Of course, we have an age range mm. where we don't actually worry about, you know, we want to be the first ones to discover something. Yeah, yeah. But fuck, the way we're treating social media now. It's crazy, man. <sighs> it's bloody crazy, man. Ain't it? It's crazy, The amount man. of times I see, I see a video and I almost like, so I, I co-sign it immediately because it's it's already plus 16k yeah that's how it's mad that's how we're looking at that's how we process things and it's like it's sad but again it's just times have changed you know what I mean times have changed back in the days it wasn't like that it was yeah. if, you, if the song was hard it was hard nowadays yeah if there's a lot of numbers behind a song you're thinking yeah man this yeah it's cold I, mean. I want to get back on this slow tempo drum and bass thing you're going yeah. on I need to hear it it's a cryptic game of numbers versus uh, numbers versus credibility, mm. because sometimes if you if you focus too much on the numbers, I mean, if you go to a radio station, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, you get, you don't go there because oh yeah, it's a radio station. You go there yeah. because how many viewers are there? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a mad one. Drum and bass definitely holds the monopoly though at the moment. Yeah, it's the, for numbers as well. Their numbers is crazy, man. It's mm. like. Like, I didn't even because for me I didn't really know about drum and bass before. Mm. Like I knew I knew about it from like 2018 because I done a I done a set with um um DJ Jag Skills. He was um what's it called filling in for DJ Target and it was me Double S and Nine Milli Major. 
Big up Jaguar skills, of course. Yeah, Jaguar, Come yeah. on. He was on the set and he was playing drum and bass beats, but I didn't even know it was drum and bass. So I just spit MC on it, but it was too fast. Was Hold thinking. on, stop, stop. So, <laughs> so you, you'd yeah. heard it for the first time? Yeah, but I hadn't... I've heard drum and bass, but I, 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 with me, I didn't process it. It's like, I didn't take it in. I knew they... Obviously, I knew it existed, but it just wasn't something that I cared about. But then that day when the set came on, and I was listening to the drum and bass beat, I was thinking, right, like, oh, I, I can't spit on this. This is too fast for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then obviously at the end of the set, I asked DJ Jagger, goes, what was that you was playing? He said, drum and bass. I was like, oh, okay. Bro, that just blew my mind. You said, that's incredible. Mm. That was in 2018. Because for its time, and I know you know this now, yeah. but I remember very vividly drum and bass coming up. I must have been about 15 or 16 when it emerged. And it was so guttural mm. in a city music. Probably to the same level as like what grime yeah. ended up being for your generation. Yeah, it's crazy to think that dynamically, as that as the whole commerciality of drum and bass shifted, mm. you weren't aware of what it was. Yeah, I just knew I knew of the sound. Incredible. Like, yeah, it just wasn't something that if you asked me, ask sub, what's your top five, what's your top music in the game? I would that wouldn't have come to mind. Mm. With me, when I'm when I'm when I'm about to get into something or. Um, I like to study the genre. Mm. So I remember as well, I saw Goldie at um, an event. I think it was with SBTV done an event for us called, um, what's it called? I am, I, he says, I think it's called I Am Blake. It was like a screening and you got me, Novelist, Double S, Rizzle Ooh. Kicks, Yizzy to perform and Goldie was a host. This was, I think, in 2017 or 2018. Jesus. And from there, when I spoke to Goldie, because I knew Goldie to be on like TV and whatnot, I didn't know he was a pioneer of DMB, mm. one of the pioneers. But I just knew him to be on TV and he done music. Mm. But then obviously, after any time I meet someone, I do my research, and then I find out, oh, okay, he's this guy and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man, that's when I started to be aware of certain things. But again, I just never knew that I would end up going that route. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you can't plan things because. I'm doing my research on something because I've met someone and then years later, I'm now doing that genre. So if it wasn't for Jag skills, you probably yeah. wouldn't have deep dived at all? I don't know. W- it's not about deep dived. I just wouldn't have been fully, fully aware. Wow. Because some of the beats were, were cold and I was thinking, yeah. this ain't grime. No. Nah. Like, what is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? So then obviously, that's when I started to take it in. But then again, when, um, fast forward, when I got to, when I think it was 2020, I was meant to shoot a video with Dizzy Rascal for our tune. We done a tune called Shaolin Temple, but um, it was lock- it was locked down at the time, innit? So you couldn't shoot videos at the time. Mm. So at the time, the person who was managing me, they were called Three or Four Music. They had a relationship with Hospital Records, so they got me in the studio of Hospital Records. But again, I didn't even know about Hospital Records sometimes as well. I fucking absolutely love that you've just walked into this culture, you know with the jacket on the shoulder, swagging your way in, like, yo, I don't know anything about this, but I'm ready to give me some info. Yeah. Fucking sick. I wanted to learn. I needed to learn because, again, like, I've, I grew up as a grime MC, grime and hip-hop. You know what I mean? Obviously, like I said, I was aware of other genres like Garage, Techno, Gr- grime, and dubstep. Drum and bass, dub- yeah. But it just wasn't something I was doing or I was into as much. You'll hear it when I... I'll hear it when I go to a festival or a club, but I just never got into it. But then from that set, the DJ Jaguar skills, I was like, hmm, okay. But still, it didn't, it didn't motivate me to go down that route. It was obviously three or four, they brought me to hospital records. And even when I first heard the instrumental for headlines, I didn't understand it first. I was like, what am I going to do on this instrumental? What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And then Winey was just like, be yourself, just be yourself, man. And then, yeah, I just done, done my thing and then, yeah, just end up doing what I had to do. And then here we are. Yeah. How what was the feedback from um, from Grime at the time with dubstep? Because on a complete polar opposite to drum and bass, where arguably Grime was affiliated through... The, the drum and bass was affiliated through the DJs in Grime. Mm. It wasn't with the MCs. But dubstep was almost the hybrid 
dance equivocal of what grime was, wasn't it? Yeah. What was the feedback when you guys started hearing Sublo and, and um, Grime, um, I Dubstep? I don't feel... I feel like everyone, people people liked it because yeah. obviously P Money was doing it, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think people did like it. But again, like I said, with Grime, Grime are very protective of their genre. Mm. They liked it. It's Grime or nothing. Mm. There's only a few that step out and willing to try other things. But mm. they will still give respect to a genre. But it's like... When you go over there, it's like, and you start doing well in that genre, that's when people start talking. Mm. If you're just trying it out, and it's like, whatever, they'll be like, oh, yeah, cool. But if you're actually starting to blow up in a genre, you might get one or two people saying, oh, yeah, he's only getting it because he's, he's doing that. Like, he's not original grime no more. He's a sellout. He's not original grime no more. That's the, yeah, that's the, the no is. more bit is the crazy. It's crazy, man. Like, I get told, people don't, like, even for me, most of the grime MCs don't even call me a grime MC no more. They call me a drum and bass artist, but it's like, I have like four or five grime tapes. I've got loads of grime. I've got more grime music than drum and bass. So how am I? I'm an all rounder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm an artist. Yeah. But people will say, oh, you're a drum, drum and bass MC. And even if you're calling me that, what is even wrong with calling me a drum and bass MC? Yeah, yeah, There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. Take but that. I'm an artist because I, I do all types. I'll do grime, garage, drum and bass. I could do everything. You know what I mean? It's just that. They just they're just upset that the drum and bass song is my biggest song. Mm. So it's like they just have something to say. And you know sometimes when a genre is doing so well and your genre is not really doing it as much, you, you tend to have a bit of jealousy. So that's why it is. But really and truly, if they had the opportunity to do it, they would do it. They would do it because there's a few grime MCs that have been going over there yeah. as well. So they would do it, and that genre is very welcoming. Because I remember when I went to their festivals, they show love. Like they're not. They don't, they don't, they're not screwing people. They're not acting like they're bad yeah. or they're stiff. When you go to a gram event, there's always someone that thinks they're bad. The, the DMV events, they're so humble and cool. They just want to get listen to music and vibe. And you know what's important to remember as well, is particularly when you're transferring skills over to another genre, the, the other genre is definitely um, appreciative to the, the, the fact that you're going out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Now, comfort zones, that'll kill you. That yeah. shit's... Not only does it bore you, but it'll bore them eventually. Mm. But when you go out your comfort, it's like it's like, um, you know, like when <laughs> Jordan, he was a baseball player, then he's a basketball player, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. he he donned the both, yeah, he and well, that's the yeah. thing. You you got to hand it to someone who's yeah. stepping into a, a whole different arena. Yeah, that's what I did. I stepped out of my comfort zone, and I've been told to do that anyway. When I spoke to Dizzy Rascal when I first done a tune with him, he he told me never be afraid to step out of your comfort zone mm. because. I mean, when I first came into the grime MC grime game, I kept saying I'm a grime MC. I'm only a grime MC. But then over time, I realized that, bro, I've got other talents. So yeah. I might as well venture as well. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's why they're so embracive of you in drum. Mm. That's why they're so embracive of Dizzy in drum and bass. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, it's rare. So look, I mean, so far as where grime lies, I mean, hey, to, to to be to be quite honest, it's in your soul. Yeah. It's in your heart, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. It is. Like, that's what I grew up on, but the way people talk, they will think, yeah, like, it's not. But it actually is because that's what I grew up on. Like, if you put me on a grime set, like, even the um, freestyle we did mm. the other day, I thought was doing a drum and bass set. When I heard it was grime, I was like, oh, wow, okay, cool. Comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's my comfort zone, yeah. isn't it? So, you know what I mean? But again, I like challenges i like being tested so that's why i'm happy drum and bass came my way because i like to be tested i like to try new things and if someone says to me oh sub go harder man it's like yeah i rate that because with grime it's got to the point i'm so grime is too easy for me now mm. like I, I i don't really make a foot wrong in grime but with drum and bass if i'm doing a tune and i think it's hard but the uh, the label or someone might say you can go harder it doesn't even demotivate me. It makes me think, yeah, man, this is... Mm. I need to go harder. Elevation. Elevation, yeah. So that's what I like. You know what I mean, grime is like, yeah, you're sick, you're sick. I'm, yeah, cool, yeah, I'm sick, but I need a challenge. Mm. You know what I mean? And you done anything on hip-hop? Yeah, I used to do hip-hop. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. When I was doing the um, street rapper, that's what we was doing, hip-hop. Ah, uh, shit. Rap beats, yeah. So, yeah. And to be honest, yeah, drum and bass is like hip-hop as well. You're yeah. rapping, basically. Yeah. It's double time business. Double time, yeah. Yeah. The only one for me is, and no, she may be not. There is a certain lay of an MC's vocal on drill. Mm. There's a certain lay, and that's that's very unique. Mm. 
to the to the drill genre, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Have you ever done that? Drill. Um, it's, a t- it's quite easy. I've tried it before. Even a, a tune I done with Tinchy Strider. It was a drill instrumental. Obviously, I was, but with me, I was doing grime on the drill instrumental because obviously, again, drill instrumentals are the same like BPM as mm. grime. But yeah, like um, drill. I, I like the drill, the drill thing. Obviously, I don't do the flow, exact drill flow, but I love their beats. The beats are sick. Mm, for real. Cold. How do you f- how, how do you see your forecast? Are you clearly on this crossover at the moment, or rather, you know. In a, in a five year cycle, you're in. You, you're about to embark on one of the either two directions. Yeah. It seems to me that you've got quite a clear plan as to what makes you happy. Yeah. But where do you see where do you see Sub Ten going in the next few years? This is a thing. Like, <laughs> oh, that's really? a good question. Really. <clears throat> Basically, at the moment, I've been kind of like working on a lot of like DMB songs. I've got a lot of Graham songs there, but. I just want to be. I actually want to be the top one of the top dogs in DMB. Mm-hmm. I really want to like be up there because I feel like I know like majority of the time DMB is not really. There's a M, there's a lot of MCs in DMB, but I feel like DMBs the DJs get more more um, mm. recognition than the actual MC. It's not like grime, mm. but I feel like I want to be the top dog in DMB. Well, um, sorry, I had to use some water. Um, if your trajectory on where you've got so far with DMB is anything to go by, I have no doubt that there will be a lot more yeah. uh, fruits of labour to come, my man. Thank you, man. Um, ladies and gentlemen, absolute pleasure. The mighty sub ten inside the place. Any shout outs? Anyone you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, I just want to big up um, Hospital Records. I want to big up Shogun Audio, DMB All Stars, and uh, Winey as well. Big up Winey. He's definitely a sick producer. Big up Cole Cole. Big up Slay. Yeah, man. Big up my management as well, Sharon. Yeah, love like that. We are like we are like in was out of fashion. Excuse me. Uh, you know what to do. Sharon is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. People, you stay lucky. That's a sub ten. <laughs> Peace.